Hey, what's happening everyone? Countinsel here with a brand new Pokemon Go video, and I hope your day is going really well, and let's get right into it. Okay, so we have the Wild Area event happening later this month, and it's meant to be the next big thing in Pokemon Go. It's supposed to be on par with other major events like Pokemon Go Fest and Pokemon Go Tour, but unfortunately, the hype around this Wild Area event is rather low within the Pokemon Go community. Like, I'm not seeing the same level of excitement that players had for the Go Tour event and the Go Fest event that we had this year. And I think that's very concerning because not only is this the very first time Niantic is trying out this Wild Area event, but if this lack of enthusiasm continues until the event starts, then I don't think Niantic is going to make a lot of revenue and that might encourage them to not do this event again in the future. And to be honest with you, I am excited about the Wild Area event. I think everything that they're doing for this event is actually pretty cool and it's definitely unique. But if Niantic doesn't do it again, I think that's going to be a real tragedy because I really do think that the potential behind this event being a yearly thing is definitely high. And it would be really nice if they were to do this every single year, mainly because I do think there needs to be a shakeup in what Niantic does with Pokemon Go. Now, leading up to this Wild Area event, Niantic recently announced that there would be an in-game event for every single player that's going to essentially set the mood and create a lot of momentum going into the Wild Area event. There's going to be a bunch of Pokemon themed around the Wild Area event that will be spawning, and you're also going to be able to hatch Toxel, which I think is a pretty big deal. And then of course, there's going to be a lot of raiding content that's going to be available that is going to be a bit of a preview of the Wild Area event weekend. So I do think this in-game event does have the potential to draw a lot of excitement, and we've certainly seen similar tie-in events with the GoTour and GoFest, and those tend to draw a lot of hype for those events. So hopefully that will be the case here, and it's really going to depend on how players receive this event. So yeah, let's talk about the details for this event because I do think there's a lot of things that we could discuss regarding all the positives and negatives with it and whether or not it's actually going to generate that hype for the Wild Area event. Alright, so this in-game event that's going to be leading up to the Wild Area event is going to be called Into the Wild. And it's going to be starting Monday, November 18th at 12 o'clock a.m. local time, and it's going to go until Friday, November 22nd at 11.59 p.m. local time. At which point, we're going to be kicking off the Wild Area event, so this is definitely going to be a lead up to that global event. Now with this event, we're going to see the debut of a brand new Pokemon, but you're only going to be able to get it from hatching 10 kilometer eggs. So have some egg incubators ready because you will want to get this Pokemon, especially before the Wild Area event. And this Pokemon is going to be none other than Toxel, and yes, you will actually be able to potentially get the shiny version of this Pokemon as well, and I think that's a pretty big deal. Now, a core feature of this Into the Wild event is going to be two paid research tickets that are each going to cost $5 USD. The first ticket is going to be all about raid battles. You're going to be able to get the following bonuses from completing research tasks. They include 20 Pokeballs, 1000 Experience, 2000 Stardust, 3 Toxel Candy, and 1 Toxel Candy XL. And then you're going to get up to two free raid passes per day with this ticket and 5000 additional experience when you complete raids. And you're going to get one additional candy from Pokemon in 4-star raids, 5-star raids, Mega raids, as well as Ultra Beast and Primal raids. Now the second ticket is also going to cost $5 USD, but this one is going to be all about hatching eggs. You will get the same bonuses and items like 20 Pokeballs, 1000 Experience, 2000 Stardust, 3 Toxel Candies, and 1 Toxel Candy XL. But you're also going to get other bonuses that are going to be themed around hatching Pokemon. This includes an increased chance of hatching the new Pokemon Toxel from 10 kilometer eggs, and then every egg that you place in an incubator is going to have a half egg hatch distance, and then there's going to be double the amount of Stardust whenever you hatch eggs, you're going to get double the amount of experience, and you're going to get double the amount of candy. And then you're also going to get one single use incubator every single day while you have this ticket. And you can get a bundle in the Pokemon Go web store, which is going to give you both of these tickets, along with some additional items like premium battle passes and incubators, which I believe this is going to be the best value. If you are planning to buy either of these tickets or both of them, make sure you go to the web store first because there's probably going to be a really good deal around these tickets. 
Now, during this event, it's going to include some wild encounters that are basically some Pokemon that are themed around the wild area event. You're going to be able to get Ivysaur, Bellsprout, Weepin' Bell, Alolan Graveler, Magnemite, Magneton, Ghastly, Haunter, Mareep, Flaffy, Roselia, Gulpin, Luxio, Stunky, Whirlipede, Emolga, Fungus, Dedenne, Grubbin, and Togedemaru in the wild. And you do not need to purchase either tickets to see these wild spawns. And the following Pokemon are going to be in raid battles during this event. You're going to see Weepin' Bell, Haunter, Flaffy, Chargebug in 3-star raids. And then in 5-star raids on Tuesday, November 19, we're going to have Nihilego. And then in 5-star raids on Wednesday, November 20th, we're going to have Tapu Koko. And then in 5-star raids on Thursday, November 21st, we're going to have Origin Form Dialga. And then 5-star raids on Friday, November 22nd, the day before the Wild Area event, is going to have Origin Form Palkia. And then during this event leading up to the Wild Area Glow, Global events, we're gonna have Drillbur in max battles. And this is pretty important because, like I mentioned before, Drillbur is going to be a top counter against Toxtricity, which is going to make its debut during the Wild Area event in max battles. Now, in terms of event bonuses that are going to be available to every player, regardless if they buy tickets or not, they're going to vary based on the day. From Monday, November 18th until Thursday, November 21st, the remote raid pass limit will be increased to 20. And then there's going to be no limit from that point on from Friday, November 22nd to Sunday, November 24th. And then on Monday, November 18th, there will be an increased chance to get Rare Candy XL from Max Battles when you're challenging Dynamax Drillbird. There's also going to be collection challenges and field research tasks themed around different Pokemon from this event. So that's something you need to keep in mind if you want to get additional bonuses and items. Now this Monday, November 18th from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. local time, we're gonna have a Max Monday featuring the Pokemon Drillbur. That's going to be a key one because, like I said before, Drillbur is going to be an essential Pokemon for the Wild Area event. And then during Max Monday, you're going to have an increased chance to get Rare Candy XL from Max Battles when you challenge Dynamax Drillbur. That's a pretty big one considering just how valuable Rare Candy XLs are. Okay, so what are my overall thoughts regarding this? Well, first and foremost, I think it's a pretty solid event. I think it's going to do its job in generating hype for the Wild Area event. But my one concern and my one gripe, my one issue with this event, and I do predict this is going to be the issue for a lot of other players, is that there's a lot of really cool stuff that they're locking behind a paywall. And I really do not like that personally. I really feel like Niantic is trying to squeeze out more money from players because maybe ticket sales are pretty low for the Wild Area event. And I really do not like that at all. I really feel like these paid timed research tickets that they have tied to this Into the Wild event should have been something that was included for anyone who purchased the global event ticket. Otherwise, it's just extra money that players have to spend for the absolute best experience. Because let's be real here, the big focus for this particular event is going to be hatching eggs for Toxel as well as doing raid battles for some of those sweet raid bosses. And if Niantic is paywalling the most efficient and the most beneficial experience that you can have, then I personally feel like that's very predatory. And uh, unfortunately, I do think that's going to cut in on a lot of the hype that they could potentially generate for the Wild Area event. Again, I think the easiest fix would be to include these $5 research tickets as something that you would get if you were to purchase the global event ticket. I think that's the most fairest move. And in the past, that is certainly something that they have done and it did go over really well with the Pokemon Go community. And it certainly encouraged players to buy the global event tickets for those special events because they want to get those special bonuses for the tie-in events leading up to those special events. So yeah, I think this is a huge missed opportunity for Niantic. I think they could have done a lot of great things with this event, especially when it comes to drawing a lot of hype towards the Wild Area event. But unfortunately, they decide to go a completely different direction. And I really do not know how players are going to receive this. I do predict that a lot of players will not be happy about this. They probably will not buy these $5 research tickets and for a lot of people who were interested in the Wild Area event, they might lose some of that interest because of these predatory practices. But at the same time, I do think that there is a lot of potential for this event to draw a lot of hype, and that's mainly because of all of the stuff that Niantic is including with this event that has nothing to do with these $5 research tickets. So. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how things go because, yeah, I really want the Wild Area event to succeed, but with Niantic doing things like this, it's not going to be a good look on them, and it's definitely going to drop players away from that special event. 
But that's just my personal opinions. I could be completely off base here. Maybe people are still going to be really excited about the Wild Area event through this Into the Wild event. And yeah, I hope that ends up being the case. Honestly, I wanna give Niantic the benefit of the doubt here, but it's really difficult when all you can see are the shady stuff that they do, but. Yeah. In any case, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know your thoughts regarding everything that I talked about down below. Do you agree with me that these sort of ticket purchases before a special event is not a good decision? Or do you feel like this is totally not a big deal and the event itself is actually pretty good? Definitely share those thoughts down below in the comments because I want to gauge what the Pokemon Go community is thinking when it comes to this. And yeah, hopefully we can have a great discussion. And thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you ended up enjoying it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. Real quick, let me give a shout out to all of my patrons on Patreon. All of you make this channel content possible. And if you want to support the content of the channel, the absolute best way to do so is to join my patrons on my Patreon. And if you choose to do that, you will get a permanent spot on my in-game Pokemon Go friends list, just like all of them. And that means for stuff like remote raids and the friendship system, if you want to play Pokemon Go with me, then make sure you go and check out my Patreon. And if you want to support my channel in a different way, you could do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Conjinsula. I'm on the platforms that you see on screen. Make sure you go over there and give me a follow so that you could keep up with everything that I'm doing in my daily life and you get some bonus content as well. So yeah. In any case, that's going to be it for this video. I'm Conjinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later. Another, da, ba, ba,